and 11. They still have premiums left. Okay. We don't have any income. I want to go to uh, David Dowling, who's a hurley maker uh, at Star Hurley. David, good morning. Morning, Pat. How are you? Uh, have you a supply of ash still? Yeah, we still have a supply, a uh, good supply. Um, so far this year, all we've, we've used Irish and English ash. So at the moment, the supply is good, but we're constantly kind of looking over our shoulder, wondering, I suppose, when the Irish supply is going to stop. You know, I, I, it doesn't feel like it's too far away. And what, what about um, uh, English ash? It, it, did it not suffer from the same fate of that pathogen? <laughs> It does, but it seems to be, um, whether it's the majority of the trees or that, it doesn't seem to be impacting it as much as, as the Irish ash. The Irish ash seems to be much younger, so it seems to be more susceptible to the disease at the moment, whereas the English ash seems to fight it for a little bit longer. So, And an issue in Ireland is the licences to knock the ash. Sometimes they were taken two years to come in when ash you know, was being impacted. So only recently, really, there's been a bit of a push on the license. So a lot of ash that was fine, you know, within two years, it, that could be... In, in other words, know, the, the, the ash was not sick yet and it could have been harvested and used for yeah. hurley making. But in the interregnum, that ash uh, disease dieback affected those trees that might have been okay. Yeah, definitely. Like I know of people, or some of our suppliers who'd be going looking at the trees and they'd be, you know, they're having to clean the bark at the bottom to make sure they're suitable for hurley making now. And they would have looked at ash that was fine and came back maybe two years later when the licence came through and ash wasn't suitable anymore. And to the cost of the of the grower, you know. Yeah. Now, uh, what about alternative materials for hurleys? Uh, they, they have been um, experimenting with bamboo. Bamboo, yeah. So there was a hurley maker in Westmead a number of years ago who would have used bamboo. It's laminated bamboo, um, so strips of bamboo glued together, and there's three kind of three layers to it. So that's been used at the moment by a good few of the hurley makers around as uh, maybe an alternative to it. So it, look, it's not the same as ash. Um, well, you know, in terms of the characteristic, want, when you when you hit the slither, is there more bounce in the bamboo or less? It feels like there's more bounce, but the ball doesn't seem to travel any further, if you know <laughs> okay. what I mean. So I, I don't know. It's um, The problem with the bamboo, so we're making hurly make hurls for people, and it's kind of bespoke hurls, and people want uh-huh. different weights. and different. Bamboo is all one kind of weight. Yeah. Whereas with ash, you get more mature ash, which is generally a bit heavier. You get younger ash, which is lighter, with a wider grain. So you're able to make hurls to suit everybody. Whereas with bamboo, you're looking at a more standardized hurl. Or else maybe adding, going back to what, happened years ago where people used to put lead into the bottom of hurls to get weight into it and that kind of thing yeah. so like ash is, re- is like there, there is no solid kind of wood replacement for it there doesn't seem to be So for the moment uh, between English and Irish ash what's left of it you're okay but you're looking beyond the horizon and it might the news might not be good yeah, particularly with Irish ash. And then there's ash in Europe as well, which I know some hurley makers are using ash. There's ash coming from the Ukraine, Slovakia. You know, there's uh, northern France is somewhere that was kind of always difficult to get into. But I think some of the suppliers are starting to kind of build some relationships with the foresters in northern France. So I think they're becoming aware of, right. you know, their ash is losing value as well. So um, what we don't, the timeline, like we're hearing about dieback for the last 20 years. Um, we don't know if in five years' time or if he's going to be using all ash or, you know, is it going to be 10 years' time or two years' time? We we, we really don't know. Right. It's um, An uncertain yeah. future. All right. Back to you, Simon, then. Uh, what's to be done now? Well, basically, Pat, it, as far as we see it, there's so much resting on this. Ash dieback is seen as the issue on which it's a yardstick to see how the state supports people in forestry. We desperately need forestry. We need people to go into it. We're the pioneers. We're the ones that people come to. How would you plant? And we're saying at the moment, under the conditions that are there, they're so restrictive that nobody's planting. Mm. We had the the Director General, uh, Brendan Gleeson, up before the Joint Committee last week, and he's practically saying that nobody's going to plant the 8,000. They need to incentivize. Now, they need to... Take a completely Are you different... talking with them? I mean, well, do you the have tr- a door open is, in the department? We have a door open in the department today. We start with this task force, which was part of this review. But the task force was supposed to design the new program, the new plan. In consultation with in you In consultation. Guys. They didn't do it. We've been continually left out. We're the ones with the experience. And we know what needs to be done. And we're now in an election year that... 
this government is heading for disaster with the way the Greens... What I don't understand is that the Green Party is the one that should be promoting things properly. It's been given the responsibility and they're making an absolute hash of it. All right, on that note, Simon White, Chairman of the Limerick and Tipperary Woodland Owners and David Dowling, Hurley Maker at Star Hurley. Thank you both. The Pat Kenny.